Um, how do I introduce these two people? John and Helen have sort of, they become almost legends in a few years on the ultra running scene in many ways, partly because of what they run and because if they're not running, they're usually helping at some checkpoint or other or helping each other. And they also help with the volunteering on the West Island Way now. And they put together this lovely little presentation on how to help, how they've helped each other, and hopefully how the crew here should pay attention for this bit because this could help you when your guy is trying to dig that hole when he's going out of Kinloch leaving in a few months' time. Okay. Thanks, Adrian. We have the other mic. For, the yeah. for anybody who's in any doubt, I'm John, and that's Helen. Um, just because you know, she's the boss. And as we were preparing for this in the pub earlier, we were having the usual discussion about what's on the plan. And I'm saying, right, got to get the plan, got to get the plan, got the plan. And Helen says, yeah, we'll wing it. You know, so um, let's kick off because it was really reassuring to hear James say how important a crew is. You know, and he's at the pointy end, he knows how to do this stuff. And so it's reassuring from our perspective to hear that what we're going to tell you at least some of it isn't bollocks. So uh, <laughs> we'll see where we can take you. So let's see how this works. So if you're a runner, you will be, your runner will be telling you, when you get to the West Highland Way, it's fantastic. Running looks like this sort of thing. If you, the buttons work, do they? Yep. You know, or this sort of thing. It's all joy, it's all happiness, and it's going really slow, and, or, or even this sort of thing. You know, it, it's fantastic. Running's fantastic, isn't it, Helen? <laughs> Time tonight, I'm going to say that. So. It really looks like this. <laughs> or this. <laughs> or even this. Look at this, Julie. <laughs> Or if you're really, really lucky, it can look like this. This was West Highland Way 2013, my first West Highland Way. We arrived at Kinloch Leven. Um, After I, the I chippy had, shot. I had thrown up 20 times on the way from Glencoe to Kinloch Leven. And we were parked up outside the community centre. I was shivering like a wreck and we didn't go into the community centre because we were scared. We were scared of Julie you <laughs> and we were scared of the fact that we were carrying our weight card and my weight had been a wee bit down at Octor Tyre when I got weighed and I was scared having thrown up all the way over the devil's staircase that when I got to the community centre they were going to pull me. That was rubbish. Nobody will ever pull you. Get in there and get looked after by the nice people. That's one of the best lessons you can get. You know, there are really good people at all the checkpoints. If you're in trouble, get in and get looked after. Don't try and solve problems yourself. So that was where I started. Let's move on then and see where we're going. Um, this bit's really important because most folk, again, it's just about supporting the runner, doing the stuff, having a nice day. Actually, you have some official jobs. This stuff is all on the website. Most folk will forget there's even a website because websites are old hat nowadays and everything's on Facebook or Yasha Pal. Go and read the West Highland Way website. The rules are there. Um, you have official duties. You've got to meet your runner at all the official checkpoints. That's not every place they can stop, but there are certain official checkpoints. You need to know where they are. It's your job to provide food and water, clothing, wipe their bum. Whatever it needs done, you've got to do it. Um, the weight card, no you've feet. got to be in charge of that. They get weighed at the start, they get weighed at Octave Tire, they get weighed at Kinloch Leaving. You've got to make sure that card's handed over, they stand embarrassedly on the, on the scales if you look like me, and you've got to um, be in charge of that. You've got to do the running support if you need it. If you're speedy like James, you don't get running support, you're too fast. If you're less speedy like we are, you get running support, and that's part of the whole experience of the West Highland Way. That might be the thing that gets you to the end. And the other bit, which again, most people forget, if your runner has a problem, it's your job to get them out. If you're on the crew, you've got to get them out. If there's real serious problems, yes, the race organization will help out and ultimately send for mountain rescue if needs be, but it's your job to extract your runner. If somebody's sitting in the middle of a field, having a hissy fit because they've just had too much, we ain't coming to get them. It's your job to get them. So. 
Let's see what we can... I've clicked it on too soon anyway, but never mind. Um, these are the bits that I think are really important. And it's about looking after yourself. Now, being a crew is all about the runner. It's about getting your runner to the finish line. But you're no bloody good to anybody if you don't look after yourself. So make sure you remember that one. Don't get your runner disqualified. Crews can get their runners disqualified, sometimes inadvertently and sometimes because they think they know more than the people that write the rules. James mentioned this next bit about knowing your runner. Yep. We're going to come back to that a bit more. Um, the other one, which is really important, even though he was making a joke about it at the beginning, is have a plan. Now, if I'm racing, John will say, you written your plan yet? And I go, no. I pack to go away the night before I go away. He packs a week before, so we're different. But you need a plan, and you need to be organised, and at the end of the day, yeah, it is all about the runner. But like I said, you've got to look after yourself, okay? So, you're going to be on the go for nearly 40 hours sometime. Well, you will be on the go for 40 hours because you'll be up the day before making sure everything's ready. Then you've got to get into Mogai. Then they set off and start the race, and trust me, running it is a damn sight easier than crewing it. And you'll learn that if you've never crewed before. John put into this slide, he put eat regularly, and then he sent me them to edit, and I put drink more often, because that's my... And she edited them, of course. <laughs> that's my biggest mistake. I'm terrible for not taking on fluids if I'm crewing, and I end up more dehydrated than the runner at the end of it all. So seriously, do look after yourself. Sleep regularly. Short cat naps, they'll do you the best. Don't drive when you're tired, even though you don't think you're tired. From personal experience, I was driving to Ben Glass and woke up on the other side of the road, still driving the car. Now, I was really lucky there was nobody coming the other way. It was frightening. It was really scary. So e don't. Even more frightening was the time when I had to tell Helen that I'd reversed her car into a ditch. Um, that wasn't because he was <laughs> tired. That's because he's a crap reverser. <laughs> Okay, but don't forget, we're all talking about what your crew, ha what, what your runner needs and all the rest of it, but don't forget your own kit, okay? You need your own bag with your own stuff in it. And you need your water, you need your waterproofs, you definitely need your midge kit. Repellent, hats, gloves, the whole suit, whatever suits you. Sun cream, hat, your favourite pillow if you want to have a sleep in the car. And remember though, you can't help the runner if you're not fit yourself. Okay, it is a tough gig. The bit about getting your runner disqualified, again, it's dead serious. Um, the race director, it's in the rules, can pull you if you do things which um, break the race rules. The obvious things are parking. Where are you allowed to take your car? You're not allowed to provide support, for example, anywhere north of Ben Glass Farm until you get to, or to Crane Larrick, but you're certainly not allowed to support in Glen Falloch. Um, make sure that at checkpoints, you don't get over enthusiastic and go too far out to meet your runner or, or follow them back um, too much. You might think, you know, if you're back of the pack or mid pack, it doesn't matter too much. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but that's the rules. If you're a racing snake like James, you're talking about a real proper competitive advantage. Um, and you've got to make sure that you don't get your runner disqualified by even looking like you're breaking the rules in that regard. You know, I'm just going for a wee run out to meet my runner. Uh, if you're not meant to be doing that, you can get them disqualified. Don't do it. And again, please, you're going to be out there a long time. You're going to get really crab it. Be nice to each other and be nice to the marshals. And if somebody asks you to do something like don't park there or go and leave your car over there, just say, aye, no bother, I'll go and do it. Don't, you know, you might think your runner is the most important person in the world, and they should be at that point in time for you, but the race is bigger than your particular needs. So be nice to everybody. And that includes the people who live in the villages that you're going to run through. Okay, we're going through some tiny wee hamlets and villages, early hours of the morning, middle of the night. It's great to have support, but remember, there's folk in their beds, so keep it quiet and keep it Consider it as well when you're parking your car. Don't park across somebody's driveway. It just upsets folk. This Ian, looks like a happy Ian picture. Gets an email. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a happy picture. It is a happy picture. This is a picture of a runner who is overdue by several hours arriving in Octa Tire, who has us worried sick, who other runners have said, oh, she's been sick. She's had a fall. And she arrived at Octa Tire with a face like a scalp backside. Yeah. <laughs> You'll notice they're holding hands. That's not joy, that's oh my God. It's not, it's because we're pals.
But um, seriously, you've got to know your runner. Jane just mentioned it. You've got to know whether they're really bad or not. And you can only judge that if you know your runner. You know, I throw up regularly. When I race, I throw up. That's what I do. So if I throw up, the first thing Helen does is kicks me out again. Um, Tell you to get to the bushes. Don't embarrass yourself. Well, there is that, <laughs> yes. Um, another example of that, we were um, marshalling on the Sky Trail Ultra. And we were out at the Blaven checkpoint there. It's the middle of nowhere. No phone signal, no nothing. A, a, a driver came by and said, you've got a runner coming in who's throwing up blood. And you're thinking, oh my God. And it was like three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, so in comes Jenny Reese Jenkins. Those of you who know Jenny, Jenny's a lovely lady, a fantastic runner. Um, and the first thing Jenny said, she looks shit. She said, am I going to die? <laughs> and at that point you think, jeez. Uh, <laughs> But well, no, what I said to her was, yes, Jenny, because we're all going to die. But you're not dying on my checkpoint and you're not dying tonight. And she hadn't been throwing up blood. She'd been eating blueberries. Because <laughs> the next thing she said was, I had some blueberries. I went, really? <laughs> you can ask her that story. She quite likes it. Yeah. But um, really important is the plan. You know, and up there are some of the things you've got to cover off on your plan. Um, you cannot plan too much. Write it down and have the conversation between runner and crew so everybody knows what they're doing. Sit around the table, have a glass of wine, whatever, but make sure everybody knows their job and it's really important that you know what the jobs are. And by the way, you should have that plan B because it might be hot, it might be cold. Some people have discussions about do they want one crew or a second crew. They might swap out um, time drum octa tire, that sort of thing, depending on who's available. But you've got to have a plan. So here's an example of just the sort of thing that we stick in our plan. And we write this down and we give everybody a copy of it. And the sort of things you're picking up there, emergency contact numbers, um, so that the crew's got them. Particularly people who aren't, you know, people are crewing who are not doing ultras day in, day out and don't know everything. You write down the emergency contacts. Um, or you make them put them in their phone. Yeah general stuff, where we're trying to get to and how we're going to get there. Um, okay. Important stuff about the, the things you want people to do. Um, let's move on a wee bit then and see. Um, the weather chart, I do this for, on I race. you know, week out, fortnight out, what am I going to do? And I've got, you've got lists here for normal weather, wet weather, cold weather, hot weather, extreme weather. And the extreme weather I, one, and we had extreme years. You get it all on the west side, you, you, know, you get full Gore-Tex, walking, walking boots, the lot. Yep. Um, it's to get you to the end. And then we do this sort of list as well. You know, checkpoint by checkpoint, what you want to happen, roughly when you expect to get there. You can make a note of the target times, the, the times you get in, the times you leave. You can adjust where they're going to get to on the fly. So you know roughly when you need to be at the next checkpoint. And you know roughly whether your runner's on plan or not on plan. This one is something else we do. It's just, again, another summary by checkpoint. So it's things like, leave the house to get to Mulgai on time. Do you know how early you've got to leave the house to get to Mulgai on time to get registered, to go to the, the toilet, to, get, to, to get, get the things you miss? Um, and, and really important, if you're on medication, things we've got in red there, take your medication. You know, if, you, you, if you've got to take medication at a certain time of day, write it up on the plan so your crew knows to give you it. Because if you're running, the last thing you're thinking about is taking your medication. Uh, and we really don't want you falling over and dying in the middle of the race. So, you know, okay. those sorts of things. When you get to the checkpoint, Helen's the queen of the checkpoint, so. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, have a plan. When you get to the checkpoint, as the crew, make sure you're ready for your runner. Because they could come in earlier than you were expecting. Or they could come in later. Doesn't matter. They might come in bang on time if you're James. But... Be ready. Now, there are some places where you're going to have to park your car and you're going to have to walk to get to where you can meet the runner. So don't have folding chairs and cool boxes and beach tents and all these lovely things if you're not able to carry them. So plan that bit. Where am I going to go? It used to be at Benglass Farm, for example, that you had to cart all your gear up the hill and onto the path. It probably won't be that this year because there's changes, but we'll talk to you about that later. Next one, which I think is really important, is... 
well, have a selection of items ready. That's just the obvious, because if they're anything like him, he will want what's not on his plan, right? He writes plans to the nth degree, yep, that, and he will ask you... The plan disappears as soon as you start He the will race. ask you for something that's not on the plan. So it's actually really important for that, too, to know your runner, because you've got a rough idea of what it is that you'll ask for that's completely stupid, and you can have it up your sleeve. Um, this one, I think, is really important. Tell them what to do. Sit, eat, drink. Not... What would you like? Would you like Tailwind or would you like Iron Brew? No, just go and open your mouth and shove that in it and then get out of it again, okay? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> um, and if it gets really, really bad, what I said to him was, well, you can always chuck it. Because I knew that was the one that would just go, Psh, end of. So I think it was there, actually, I said that to him. Um, so never give them choices. Never, ever give them choices. Do you want your headphones in? Do you want a clean buff? Really? No. Next one's quite important to pretend you're listening to them because actually it's your plan. You're going to get them in, you're going to get them sorted and you're going to get them out again. They'll do what they're told. And when they tell you how terrible it's been, Amanda, um, you say, and they're there, yes, yes, that's really bad. And all the time you're looking at How like, many I, times they've thrown up? Uh, actually, oh, yeah. All the time. Amanda comes into the checkpoint, oh, thrown up, thrown up. I've been thrown up for hours and hours and hours. She threw up once. <laughs> <laughs> And you Ian, will, Ian would tell you this if he was here. But this last one is important. They need to tell you three times they want to stop before you believe them. Because they'll tell you at least twice when they don't mean it. But you've also got to be aware too that maybe they might need to be told they've got to stop. And that comes back to the thing about knowing your runner. You've got to have somebody, I think we've got this a wee bit further on, but you've got to have somebody with whom you have a relationship, not necessarily our type of relationship, but with whom you have a relationship where if they say to you, I think you've had enough. You have to believe them and trust them that they're making the right call for you. This is Helen before the start of the West Highland Way, one of the years she did it. Um, notice the back of the car. It's OCD hell. There are boxes. That inside the boxes, there are bags. Each bag is labelled. There's be a bag for jackets, a bag for socks, a bag for clean underwear. You name it, there's a bag with a label on it. And uh, I went specially and bought the boxes the right size so that they would all fit in the car and not have any wasted space. I still don't pack to the night before, but I can pack. The really important bit, uh, just to mention as well, if you haven't got your crew sorted yet, when you pick your crew, think carefully if you can about who you want and why you want them. You know, um, we've crewed for each other many times. We've crewed for poor Amanda there who's getting stuck tonight. Um, but when you do crew, you tend to, you want to get the right balance of people. So when we crew for Amanda last year, for example, you know, Amanda's husband Clark, he's a logistics man. He does the driving. He gets from A to B. He does all that sort of stuff. Helen does the, t the checkpoint care. She's the one that sort of wipes the nose and holds the hand and and I do a bit of backside kicking in the sport running and just generally make things happen okay. okay. Um, when I've had, when it's been my turn to run, I've had a similar sort of thing. I, you know, I've had Amanda and Clark support me. Um, Helen does the checkpoint stuff. Um, I would never, ever have Helen run with me, for example. I'm not fast enough. Well, apart from the fact that we run different paces, um, if we were to run together, we'd kill each other. It, 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 you've got to have the right dynamic. Whereas when I, you know, when, um, Amanda's run for me and I've, I've run for Amanda. Um, if you get the right person, then you can run. You, you can be out a long time with these people. Um, and so you want people who... And actually, I've, I've run West Hamway a couple of times and I've had different types of crew um, both times I've done it. The first time I did it, um, I had a slightly less experienced crew because I wanted them just to experience it with me and we were there. We we're going to all have a bit of a jolly and because... For me, because they were um, new to it and less experienced, um, there was no pressure on me to perform. They, they were there, part of it, enjoying it, and we, we all did the thing. The, the most recent time I did West Ham Way, I was a bit more focused on trying to do well, and so I picked people who, who were more experienced and who were actually going to keep me honest, push me on, and um, a different type of environment. So depending on what you want out your race, um, depends on who you might pick. If you've got that luxury of picking people, not everybody has that, um, sometimes you just got to be grateful for anybody that will come with you. Uh, but put some thought into it. Okay. Um, and it is all about the runner. You know, um, if you're crewing and your runner's doing great, it's the best feeling in the world. If your runner's having a crap day, it's horrible. 
because you can do nothing about it. If you're waiting in a checkpoint and your runner hasn't turned up, or you're looking at your watch thinking, are they going to make it? That's, that is really horrible. I've seen grown men in tears in Kinloch leaving because a runner got pulled. You've been up for 30 hours and your runner's just no made it the last hurdle. That is awful. Okay. Um, so you've got to do whatever it takes. I mean, this year with Amanda, I said, um, we expected great things. We had slightly less great things. I was, my plan was, I, I, was going to, I was going to run with her from Glencoe. Um, she turned up um, dead in Octa Tyre. And we looked, so I said, uh, why don't we just walk with you to Tyne Drum? <laughs> and she didn't say no. So I said, right. So I stripped off my clothes because I had already my running gear underneath my normal clothes. But I didn't want to, didn't want to meet her with my running clothes on in case she didn't want me. So I was like Superman, strips off the stuff. Oh, we'll just walk and then, okay, we'll just start to run a wee bit and then we get to Tyne Drum. And, oh, well, I just keep going. Well, okay, we'll just, we'll just keep going. So I think I, I ended up running so 35 miles or something that that session instead of the the, the 20s so you've got to just be prepared to do what's necessary okay this you can read but actually just real quickies if you go to Mill Guy, get there on time Drimmon if you go to Drimmon you don't need to go to Drimmon um, but if you do go there make sure you park well away from the road end um, Balmaha is a good place lots of space there you get sleeping breakfast there really important River Denon, you can go there if you're a runner it's good to go there but it's a pain in the back to drive down there and you'll get eaten alive by midges Inversnade, don't even think about it. You know, if you look on the map, oh, Inversnade, next checkpoint. Inversnade's about a four hours drive there and back. Don't. Uh, ben Glass um, might be different this year, so just keep an eye out for that one. Don't assume it's going to be the same as previous years. The Octa Tire's a great place. Um, if it's wet, just watch your car, doesn't it get stuck? Because it's, even uh, if it's not wet, just yep. be aware of that because you will be parking on a field. So think of the type of vehicle you've yep. got. You know, if you've got a wee Lotus, it's not much good as a crew car. Maybe Bridge of Morky, nice. um, again, lo not a lot of space there. Um, those who know about it know there were two wee alternatives there, but I'm not going to tell you about them. Um, Glencoe's a great place, great big car park, lots of hot food, stay open late. You can yep. get there, get, get a bit of sleep while you're waiting on your runner. Toilets, showers, yep. if you're that way inclined. Great showers, actually, for a pound. Kinloch Leaven, best checkpoint in the world. Absolutely. It's warm, tea, toast, you name it. Um, Julie does personal service there. Um, well, not that kind of personal service, but she but does. Um, <laughs> um, um, she won't clean up your sick, though. You have to do no. that for your runner. Yeah, just don't throw up in her bin. Uh, <laughs> Londover is a great place, but it's a pain in the arse road to get up there, particularly if you're not used to driving on single track roads and you're tired. So think about, do you really want to go there? And then, of course, Fort William. This year, it's a new finish. Don't turn up at the leisure centre because we won't be there. Um, okay. Running support. Not the crew fail. My crew let me go out dressed like that. Can I just um, say? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Julie. That's just exactly what I was going to say. He said to me tonight when he was going over his notes, he said, I'm putting crew fail. And he's written it on the paper. I went, why? And he said, you let me go out dressed like that. I said, I take no responsibility whatsoever. Sartorial elegance in its extreme. Thank God Clark looked tidy. Yeah. So there we are. Um, running support. Um, Again, Terrence Pick and Crew. Clark there is a um, personal trainer, ex army. Um, I always have a sticky point going across um, Rannoch Moor. I knew that if, Cl if I had Clark there, he was going to route march me across the exactly. Rannoch Moor whether I liked it or not, and he did it. And it, so it's per worked perfectly. Yeah. Um, so you, you've got to know your runner. You know, does it just somebody want a bit of company? Do you want a, a rabbit? I like a rabbit. I, 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 I like somebody just to run in front of me and then, or I'm um, half a step behind them, they just keep me going. Um, Amanda and I have a bit, of deal, a bit of a deal when I run with Amanda that basically she does what she's told. Um, I do the running bit, she just runs beside me and we keep going. Um, split your running duties if need be because it is a hell of a long way from Octa Tyre. If you're picking somebody up at Octa Tyre, that's you know, 40 odd miles. miles to go, yeah. yeah. Okay. In terms of what's in your bag, I always carry a really big bag if I'm, support, if I'm the support runner, because things might go wrong, you might need stuff. And particularly if you're a slower runner, I like to have wee surprises. So I have things like um, liquor, bags of licorice all sorts, or I have um, fruit pastels or tins of ginger beer, um, or this year it was horrible tasting cookie dough smoothies and things like that. And Basically, all I do is every wee while, I take something out of my bag and I shove it in Amanda's face and she eats it. And it's a good way of keeping the energy up. And the reason I pick 
um, things like um, liquors of all sorts, it's because things which taste horrible or different are a really good stimulant and they just kick your brain back in. If you're forced into thinking, Ooh, I don't like this, then you, it actually just picks you up. If you're struggling, it's a good thing to do. I always, always have a wee miniature with me as well for emergencies. Um, oh, but that's for the crew. Sometimes my emergencies. <laughs> uh, so you've got to do that. And it's just about getting to the next checkpoint and starting again. You know, if you're having a good time, it's great. If you're having a bad time, you know, it's dark, get to the next checkpoint. You don't think any further than that. Right, let's... Okay, Joe Thrithman, really, really quickly, because oh. there's a funny story with this one, isn't there, Amanda? Oh, yeah. Um, what happens? Well, there is, because running across the Larrig, particularly in the second night, is a special thing. And it takes a special kind of approach. Um, so this year, um, I say, Amanda had a, was having a, a kind of rough time. Well, in the, in the end, she pulled it back together and had a great run. But she was falling over, uh, which is slightly unfortunate if you're trying to cruise somebody. Uh, so we just kept picking it up and moving on again. But you chunk, chunk it. Think of the landmarks if you're running with somebody. You know, okay, let's get to the top of the climb. When we get to the top of the climb, then we get to the gate. When we get to the gate, we turn get the corner. The oh, actually, we can maybe see Jeff Smith and the torches at the top end of the climb. When we get to the top end of the climb, all right, we're only just round the corner to where the forest used to be, and we're only a wee bit in from Lundavra. And then you'll see the fire. When you see the fire at Lundavra, or you hear the music. And another wee thing that's really good if you get the chance you know, just take a second or two before you go into a checkpoint and compose yourself. And say, actually, no, I'm going to run in, I'm going to be big and strong. Because when you run in looking good, your crew treats you differently from when you go in going, oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, Keep moving. Yep. I, there's one other story because I'm oh, going across the Larrigan, I must tell this one. In terms of the surprises, you just need to be careful what you say when you pass people. Because uh, I was running with Amanda um, two times ago. And I was busy feeding her salted peanuts, just to keep her going. And she wasn't really liking the salted peanuts, so I was. I don't want them. I was heard to say, and this appeared in somebody's blog. Um, as I passed them, I was overheard to say, "Just suck the salt off my nuts and spit them out." <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you're really lucky and you get to the finish line, the finish line isn't the end. It's the start of the next phase for the crew, and it's probably one of the most important things that you have to do. When John gets to the finish line, he wants to just sit up and party and wee ya and all the rest of it. I, by that time, I'm knackered. I know everybody else is knackered, and I know that he's knackered too, although he doesn't actually think he is. Get them in the shower carefully. Watch them in the shower, because that's where people fall over. Get them in the shower. Get them to bed. Make sure the crew goes to bed, preferably with a shower as well. Then get up and go for breakfast. Then you've got the prize given. After that, you can party. But you've got to get them there, because that's the real special end. When you see everybody there and you're part of it all. And if, like me, you don't finish, still go to the prize given, because you're still part of what happened. And it's still as much your day as anybody else's. And go and enjoy it and enjoy everybody else's success and catch up with all your pals, because I think there's nothing worse than slunking away in the corner because you didn't manage to get to the finish line. It's, it's, these things happen and all of you who are doing it this year some of you might not get there we hope you all do but if you don't you've still had a bloody good shot at it you got to the start line fit and healthy and you did your very best and that's what counts you're part of this whole journey right to the end the best bit though is go to the party afterwards because that's really good um, unless you drink the Sandra what that's Sandra's fault that um, Hal Kerner got so tipsy and she's not here so I can talk about her um, but then after that, you've got your plan for getting home now. A lot of people stay afterwards, which is great. Have a sleep, have a rest, get yourself back into eating and drinking normally before you drive home. We had a horrendous thing happened a couple of years ago, not the West Highland Way, but after the devil, where a chap was driving home, stopped for petrol, or his pal stopped to go into the, the petrol station to the toilet or something. He felt sick. He reached in the back of the car to get a carrier bag to throw up into and his foot caught the accelerator of the car and he ran his wife's brand new car straight into a petrol pump. We're very lucky that there's still a village in Tyndrum and that Graham is still alive and well to take such fantastic photographs and he won't mind that I told you that story either. When you get home though, and Sean will no doubt want to talk a bit more about this one, but when you get home, just keep an eye on everybody and make sure that they are okay because funny things happen afterwards. Somebody said afterwards about feeling really horrible for a fortnight afterwards. It happens. 
it's not all singing and dancing all the time. The last part of the title of our presentation um, was Creative Uses for Vaseline. Uh, back to 2013 West Highland Way was and was, yeah. sometimes... And this is where you really have to know your runner and you have to trust each other. Sometimes <laughs> you've got to do it. Um, you've got to do whatever it takes to get I them I had moving. had an unfortunate incident with my um, <laughs> underwear malfunction. <laughs> and had it patched up. If anybody's ever tried sticking a compete on the left testicle um, at a checkpoint, it ain't easy. It, it'd come off by the time I got to time jump and Helen had to retrieve some Vaseline from my support runner, George, who didn't want his Vaseline back after that for some reason. Okay. And that is us. Um, we've written up most of the misadventures we've had. So if you, um, you want to have a look at our blogs, that there's, there's there, Amanda's are there as well. Um, and that's it. Enjoy supporting and have fun.